Lucas Giolito was just traded to the Angels. Let's break it all down on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Thursday, July 27th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Chris Towers. And let's talk about the trade. Giolito headed to the Angels. They also received Ronaldo Lopez, and in return, the White Sox received two prospects, catcher Edgar Cuero and pitcher Kai Bush. Giolito this season, 379 ERA, 122 whip, well over a strikeout per inning. He's a top 40 starting pitcher regardless of format. Chris, does anything change here for Giolito on the Angels? It's a slight downgrade, I think. Not so much because of the park. I think it's an upgrade in terms of the supporting cast. But the problem is the switch from the six man or the five man rotation to the six man rotation for the Angels. As long as Shohei Otani's there, and that's at least through the end of this season, based on this move, uh, there are going to be, you know, if you look at the rest of the schedule, it's probably like one or two fewer starts. So it's not that big of a deal, but it probably means no two star weeks. And that's a big deal for those, you know, maybe one or two weeks that Lance Lynn was likely to have two starts. It, it does hurt his value in those starts. It, it limits the upside, I would say. Overall, if you're playing in a Roto League, I don't think it changes how you view him. If you're playing in a points league, I mean, look, the playoffs start in like four weeks, so he might not have had any two start weeks in that span anyway. But yeah, it, it limits the upside just a little bit for like Lucas Giolito. The rest of the fallout for the Angels, it will it seems like Chase Silseth will either head back to the bullpen or the minors, and their new six-man rotation will feature Otani, Giolito, Reed Detmers, Tyler Anderson, Griffin Canning, and Patrick Sandoval. The prospects received, I mentioned Chris, Edgar Cuero, a 20-year-old catcher, and Kai Bush, a 23-year-old starting pitcher. What do you think about the return here for the White Sox? Yeah, Cuero is clearly the the jewel of this package the problem is at least from a fantasy perspective if you just go look back at the top catcher prospect rankings over the past five seasons and there are some hits but even the hits i mean adley rutschman was a a no-brainer but even a hit like sean murphy took like three or four years to really hit and you've got a lot of guys like luis campusano and francisco mejia and joey bart who never hit and so you know cuero Aggressive promotion to double A and the the numbers aren't great there, but I think a lot of scouts really like him. I'd be surprised if he made much of an impact next season. You're probably looking at more like a 2025 timetable for him. If again, he bucks the trend for catcher prospects. The other trade that we had on Wednesday, Ahmed Rosario was traded to the Dodgers in exchange for Noah Syndergaard. And it's been a letdown season for Rosario hitting 265 with three home runs, nine steals, and a 675 OPS. He's 65% rostered. Chris, would you be looking to add Ahmed Rosario, and do you think he'll play every day with the Dodgers? Uh, No, I think, like, the Dodgers didn't trade for Ahmed Rosario and Enrique Hernandez yesterday because they gave up or scored one run against Yusei Kikuchi today, but that's the, the kind of thought process behind it. They've actually struggled a decent amount against left-handed pitchers this season. And Rosario has been much better against lefties in his career, obviously Enrique Hernandez as well. So I think Rosario is going to play more than Hernandez, I think, but he's been bad defensively this season. The overall batting line is still not great. I would think it's probably if he plays 75, 80% of the games, the rest of the way that would sound right to me. So I think on the whole, it's probably a downgrade for him. Not someone I would be looking to add. We had a prospect promotion as well. Pretty big name here. The Giants promoted Marco Luciano, who was batting eighth in the lineup in his debut. He went 0 for 2 in that game, but this is a 21-year-old shortstop, highly ranked prospect for years. Broke out as a teenager back in 2019. The numbers never really got back to that 2019 level, Mm -hmm. but Chris, we're expecting big power here for Marco Luciano. He's 24% rostered. Uh, Do you think he'll stick around long enough? Because... We do have some other Giants middle infielders getting set to return. Yeah, we expect big power. We also expect big strikeouts, 30% strikeout rate this season in the minors. And he's dealt with some back issues over the past couple of seasons in addition to the climbing strikeout rate. So his prospect standing has taken a little bit of a hit, but scouts rave about his bat speed. 
considered one of the best, one of the highest bat speeds in the minors. And so, you know, if he gets hot, it could be a lightning in a bottle situation, but the likeliest outcome is what you saw today. He got pulled for a pinch hitter. That was, I think, Luis Matos. The same thing happened in his debut. This is what the Giants do. They're going to try to ring out as much of an advantage against every matchup as they can. That often means that they're pulling guys in the sixth, seventh inning. And so I think the likelier outcome for Marco Luciano is he just doesn't make much of an impact, possibly gets sent down pretty quickly if he doesn't catch fire. But look, if you've got a roster spot to play with, go ahead and add him and, and just see what happens. It's, it's one of those ones where there's probably no downside to seeing what happens, even if the likeliest outcome is he's not super useful. Especially in deeper leagues, too. I have deep leagues where I am struggling at middle infield. So uh, in formats like that, go out, add Luciano, see what happens, see if he plays and and if he sticks around. But this is a big upside prospect. Maybe not so much for this year, but further down the line for the Giants. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. And we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.